What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we've got a great episode of Poker Hands for you where Brad Garrett makes some serious moves in the Poker Night in America streets. I was at the table when this went down, and I'll admit, I was pretty surprised. Let's go ahead and jump into the hand. Flats with the king ten off. Oh, I told you he's a kind of really good player. He was probably going to be the best player in the world. And I, I'm seeing different. Who, who do you like versus me? It's not about you. I don't want to pick any specific player. I would just say all the players. Right? Our hand preflop has a little bit of action with Jeremy Kaufman straddling it up to 100. We all know how much Jeremy loves the straddle. Now the action opens with Brad Garrett opening the hijack with Jack-9 suited, certainly a standard play, and he does open it for big blinds. I like that decision at a table playing as crazy as this one. Siegel makes a, I'm going to use the word bad call here in the cutoff with King-10 offsuit. Especially when you're facing a raise this big, you want to just let this go. If you were even considering playing, I would say probably 3-bet, but even then, just let this guy go. There are so many better hands you can have. Now the action folds to Matt Glantz in the big blind who looks down at King Queen. Now I don't really mind either option here for Matt. I think a little bit of calling and some three betting would be good, but I do lean a little bit more towards three bet. By three betting, you take away the initiative from, from Brad Garrett, you knock out weak hands behind, like maybe King 10 from Siegel, and then post slot, you set some spots where you can get some profitable bluffs. Also, King Queen has pretty good removal effects. Your opponent's a lot less likely to have hands like uh, Ace King, Ace Queen, King's Queen. So, a uh, good playability and removal. I generally like to three bet. Anyway, he does call, and Jeremy Kaufman's not going anywhere. So, let's take a flop. I'll take the you like, or? At the moment, I gotta go with Matt. Hot pair for the squish, man. I'll, I'll take myself with Matt. I don't Matt. like giving Matt any props in poker. I, I think here, he sucks. Yeah, I put it here. Just, just, just do this the line. You're making yeah, it a little bit. That's so, right. so, 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 right. You can have Matt, right. and, and I'll take me from here, and we'll see who does better. Prop bucket, what do you say? He didn't come to Philly to he's watch winning, again. He's playing his A game. It's interesting because uh, Siegel's got the whole table behind him. He's got position on me. Not really. Top pair, weak kicker. Not only just the whole table, he's got Jeremy behind him. So you can, yeah. you, you can never feel too good about your top pair. Yeah. Uh, you're going you're gonna to beat this Calls guy. it off. This is one of those spots where Mike could get bluffed. The flop comes king six deuce and two players have flopped top pair, but Glantz has Siegel out kicked. Now Brad Garrett's not just done yet and decides to take a stab on the flop. Brad Garrett decides to go for almost a full pot bet here with Jack-9 suited. Now this is a bit larger than I'd like to see on a dry board like King-6 Deuce Rainbow. You want to use a few smaller sizes. Either your opponent has a king and will call or they don't and they're going to fold unless maybe they have a hand like A6 suited. But in general, most hands either hit this flop kind of hard or brick and most hands brick on a dry board like this one. As far as what hand he decided to bet with, I don't mind this at all. He's got the backdoor flush draw, he's got the backdoor straight draw, he does block a few king jack, king nine type hands, so all in all, I like this play. Now, in the cutoff, Siegel has no choice but to call. He can't raise because he's beat by better kings, you know, ace king, certainly a hand that Brad Garrett could have, or aces, or sets, or some of the players behind. There are so many ways he can lose this hand, he has to just play his hand as a call. Now over to Matt Glantz, and again, he's pretty handcuffed. He's also just simply going to have to call here. If he raises, he gets way too much action for his hand strength, and there's a very good chance he's ahead of both players, so he doesn't really have much choice but to call. Wait. Wait, what just happened? Does he know what he had there? Now this seems too crazy to be possible, but I reached out to Matt Glantz to ask him if he had King Queen, and he said to me, yeah, I folded King Queen because I thought he had no bluffs and doesn't value bet anything but the nuts. I was clearly mistaken. Jeremy Kaufman gets out of the way with his 10 high, and uh, he also seems to approve of Matt Glantz's fold. Bad. You'll see, right? Snap calling. Let's take it easy. This is actually, we're, we're in, he's obviously decided he wants to play pots with Brad. Yeah. 
Now, Brad decides to bet 2,000 on the turn, and I'm not a massive fan of this size. Again, if he'd bet a bit smaller on the flop, he could bet something more like this on the turn and set up a river jam, and it would be a bit more even in terms of street by street bet size. You want to aim to bet around the same percentage of the pot across multiple streets. Yeah, you could, you know, you're going to want to pick different ones on different streets sometimes, but in general, a good rule is trying to make your bets around the same size of the pot on each street. With King-10, Siegel's got to be a little more worried now. There are no draws on this board. There's no flush draw. There's not really a, a straight draw he could be opening unless maybe he has Ace-5 or Ace-4 suited, but not really any straight draws. If Brad Garrett is bluffing, he just has to be straight bluffing, and he is. Let's take a river. I don't think it will matter. Yeah, you can't, don't think? It can't matter. Come on, you said Mike is uh, Not with that stack. Yeah, I guess that's true. Wow, I do love the... Wow. No, is he considering Yeah, he, ooh, come on. I kind of hope he does. Just uh, for, just for this. You get bluffed by Brad Garrett. <laughs> this is, this is a good, a that good turn for Brad Garrett, Garrett though. Possible once he calls I didn't expect, I'm there. not going to lie, I did not expect have him to come in and, and uh, it's hard does the Advil the play? The river is a seven. The board is Brick City. And Brad Garrett moves in on the river. I think everyone loves that play. In general, you would prefer to make this move when you have a hand like Queen Jack or Queen Ten of Spades, where you block King Queen, King Jack, or King Ten suited. In the cutoff, Siegel shouldn't be calling with many offsuit kings like this, but he did. But you want to try and block hands your opponent should have, even if they might not have them. Jack Nine doesn't actually block any of those hands because the king is already a diamond, so King Jack and King Nine of Diamonds aren't possible. But here's the thing Siegel knows that Brad Garrett's a famous actor. When you're a famous actor, everyone knows that you're capable of telling a little bit of a false story. And it looks like Siegel got a whiff of what he was up to. You said it yourself, Mike does not like... Uh, I thought he could lay it down on, these, on the turn. Yeah, he showed his hand. And, uh, he does not look thrilled about it. I mean, he only beats a bluff. Well, obviously not. You just can't call the turn. I'm inclined to agree, but but at the same time, it's like. There's 3,500 left. There's 14 in the pot. Yeah, I mean, is that, is that really? Oh my God! Did he just I know. fold? You're, I guess. I guess. I didn't even look at the stack set. Now he's got more than that. Yeah. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Oh my God! That's crazy. And Brad shows. That was strong. Yeah! Wow. So Brad, is that Advil there for you or is that for Siegel after he just got beat down? Thanks for joining for today's episode of Poker Hands. I've been doing some streaming lately. You can stop on by at 6 a.m. right here on YouTube for some bankroll challenge. I'll see you guys there and remember to hit that subscribe button.